Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, we talk about counterpunching, right? Counterpunchers are the safe crackers of the sport. They usually start slow because they're trying to figure out the angles. They're trying to see what you're throwing so they can counter it, right? They'll try different tactics to figure out what works. And then when they figure out what works, they'll be able to exploit it, right? Now understand with counter punchers, the mind is the most important part of their game. Right? They're not relying on hand speed. Even though some of them are gifted hand speed wise, they're not relying on hand speed as much as they are relying on punch selection. Right? Strategy and understanding is key. Typically, counter punchers are decent defensively because they're going to start slow. They're going to spend the first few rounds reading you, so they have to block what you're throwing back. If you look at the copy box numbers on most counter punchers, you're going to find out that they throw fewer punches early in a fight than they do as the fight progresses. Let me point out too, some counter punchers will even get knocked down early in a fight because they're so busy watching what you do, right, that they're not throwing a lot back so their opponents will look as good as possible early in the fight. Let me name some major counter punchers. Juan Manuel Marquez, right? He'll get knocked down against a Manny Pacquiao early in two different fights. But then as every fight against Manny Pacquiao progressed, Juan Manuel Marquez seemed to improve. He seemed to figure out what was going on. Another counter puncher is Floyd Mayweather. Mayweather usually starts slow. If you look at Mayweather fights, even the Ricky Hatton fight, Mayweather his start starts a little slow. He gets knocked down against Zab Judah. He almost gets knocked down by Shane Mosley. But once Floyd Mayweather figures out your game, it's lights out. By like round five, Mayweather typically is dominating the fight, dominating to the point where he can literally look at Oscar De La Hoya in their fight and smile and laugh because he knows what the other guy is doing, right? Counter punchers are the most adaptive, reactive of boxers. Now let's talk about Mikey Garcia. I don't care how old Mikey is. I understand he's in his 20s. But this guy is a textbook technician, right? He's a counterpuncher extraordinaire. As you watch this film of Mikey Garcia against Juanma, just think of a left hook. I'm telling you, Mikey Garcia spends the first round looking at Juanma, reading Juanma. Once he figures out that he can land that left hook, Folks, this fight is over, right? Garcia has an excellent left hook. He starts landing it with regularity. He starts setting it up with regularity. The first knockdown is a right hand. I'll concede that. Of course, before then, the heavy punches that Mikey Garcia lands are left hooks. Let me point out that the knockout punch in the fourth round is a left hook. Right? Understand, counter punchers are mathematicians. I know Juanma is pointing to his chin. Juanma is trying to taunt Mikey Garcia. He's taunting the wrong personality type. Garcia is just in there adding up equations. Right? He's figured out early on that Juanma has no answers to his left hook, and Juanma has little head movement. Juan Ma also doesn't know what to do. If Mikey Garcia throws that left hook at the end of a combination, 
Understand, once a safe cracker has cracked your code, once he has figured out the combination, you can continue to talk smack all you want. But the safe cracker knows he can get into your safe. That's who Mikey Garcia is, right? Hand speed doesn't matter, right? Because Garcia is landing flush punches. He also has the mental makeup of a counterpuncher, right? By mental makeup, I'm talking about when you look at a great counterpuncher, James Tony, Floyd Mayweather, um, Juan Manuel Marquez, nothing faces these guys. These guys can get dropped. I saw Marquez against Juan Diaz get roughed up. I believe he got dropped in the first fight. Gets off the canvas, just nods, knows where he is, understands the time of day, also knows that he knows how to get to Juan Diaz. In that fight, he figured out Juan Diaz could get hit with uppercuts. In this fight, Mikey Garcia figured out that Juan Ma could get hit with left hooks. Right? This is the cerebral approach to boxing. Now let's talk about what Mikey needs to work on. I'd like to see Garcia actually have to deal with the guy inside. If he can, you're talking about a guy who is among the top 10 pound-for-pound pound fighters in the sport. But let me say this, he looks wooden to me. He's not flexible, he's not fluid. I question whether he can handle a guy who D's up and doesn't throw punches until he's right up on Mikey Garcia. Right, one might actually did land a few punches in this fight. He did, you know, but Juan Ma was too far away and Juan Ma being a puncher didn't have the nuances of the sport mastered. Longtime subscribers know I took Salido in both fights against Juan Ma, right? Juan Ma is a slugger who rarely has had to rely on boxing technique. Mikey Garcia, who has a big knockout punch, who has a lot of power, is different. Mikey is a technician. It's all technique. I'd like to see Mikey handle a guy up on his chest who can get inside of his grill. Let me also point out, too, that I did not make a pre-fight video on this fight. Mikey Garcia got his nose broken in the Orlando Salido fight. Right, and then chose not to continue fighting. I don't blame him. In my opinion, sports should not be life or death. But I will say this you know, one wonders what would happen if a guy gets inside and touches his nose a few times and is up on his chest. That didn't happen here. To the Mikey Garcia fans, let me say this if he shows me he can make weight, and if he shows me that he could fight inside, then he'll certainly be one of the best fighters in the sport, pound for pound. Even after this absolutely dominant performance, I still have some concerns. Maybe Mikey Garcia will be able to address them in future fights. Let's shift gears. Let's talk about a different fighter. A lightweight. Terrence Newman. Now, longtime subscribers know that it's very rare when I call a guy an uncrowned champion. Earlier this weekend, after watching a devastating performance on Friday night, I made a video where I called Sergei Kovalov an uncrowned champion at light heavy. Let me say, this man from Omaha, Terrence Crawford, has me absolutely convinced that he is an uncrowned champion. This guy is excellent. Let me point out that I'm not alone. At the beginning of the telecast, Max Kellerman calls Crawford, who was relatively unknown before he beat Breedis Prescott, the best lightweight in the world. I agree with Max Kellerman. Right, I think this guy is simply spectacular. 
the only one in the area code, in my opinion, who might give him problems is Adrian Broner if Broner goes back down to 135. Let's talk about it. For the old timers, let me just say, this guy reminds me of Pernell Whitaker, right? He clearly was a cut above his opponent, Alexandro Sanabria, who he KO'd in, I believe, the sixth round. Like Pernell Whitaker, Crawford has great defense. Great defense. And like Pernell Whitaker, Crawford has a vertical game going on. In other words, he can bend at the knees. He can have you throw punches and duck under them. Right? He's flexible. He's the kind of guy who can hit you up top, then if the moment arises, can bend his knees, throw the same straight punch, and hit you in the belly. Right? He has a nice high guard. He has a nice stinging jab. This is not a placeholder jab. He's not just throwing the jab for timing purposes. No, he's throwing the jab to hurt you. Right? Let me point out something too. Mikey Garcia is the one who told Cameron Duncan, according to HBO, in response to Duncan's question of who are the great unsigned boxers out there? It was Mikey Garcia who told his manager that Terrence Crawford was a fighter he needed to look at. That Terrence Crawford actually beat him in the amateurs. Crawford, simply put, is more fluid than Mikey Garcia. I believe he has more upside. He's advanced. Let me also say, too, for a young guy, he is a devastating body puncher. He also has a very elusive upper body. In other words, he's a defensive master, right, who is an excellent athlete with great reflexes, who marries that with great boxing technique. Like Mikey Garcia, he's landing punches flush. He's reading you. He's adaptive, reactive. He's making adjustments during the fight. He ended his fight with a lead left hook, and it was a beautiful punch. He's willing to lead with power punches. He doesn't need to set them up with placeholder jabs, although he does have an excellent jab. I believe he's an uncrowned champion, as with Kovalov. A year from now, I'll be surprised if Terrence Crawford isn't wearing a belt around his waist or isn't in line scheduled to fight one of the prevailing champions. Now let's talk about what's troublesome. He did get hit with some left hooks early on, right? Crawford conceded he got hit, but claimed that the reason he got hit was because he was trying to be the aggressor. Now, let me just say, we're talking about the championship level of the sport. A crafty opponent could use this information to try to set traps to make him pay for being aggressive, right? To set up left hooks after playing a game of possum that suckers Crawford into being aggressive right now that hasn't happened yet I'm gonna have to just like with Mikey Garcia I'm gonna have to see a little bit more about Terrence Crawford because I am a little concerned about the fact that he did get caught flush a couple of times he did show a great chin but he did get caught right in other words he has great defense except momentarily it breaks down well, you and I know a big-time puncher only has to land once to beat you. So it is a concern. In any event, let me sum up by saying I was very impressed by both Mikey Garcia, who is a spectacular technician, spectacular, and Terrence Crawford. I do have questions about Mikey Garcia inside as well as what happens the next time some guy lands flush on Mikey Garcia's nose. I also have some questions about Terrence Crawford's defense 
when he gets aggressive and is trying to exert himself, some things defensively fall apart. But you need to keep an eye on both of these guys. Quite frankly, both of these guys are better than advertised. I was a bit of a skeptic on Mikey Garcia. I'm no longer the skeptic I was. He has convinced me that he has the kind of calmness and the kind of analytical ability, the kind of adaptive, reactive, counterpunching approach that quite frankly could easily make him one of the best in the sport, pound for pound. As it is, he is an unbeaten fighter. Let me just throw a red flag on him, though. You mean to tell me that you win a title and then you don't even show up at weight in your first defense? I have to shake my head on that one. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com and on Roku at the Wire Boxing News. Thanks for stopping by.